Hey, Redcon Raider here. Today's video is dedicated to the Raiders, the fine folks who help make these videos possible. With special thanks to Revenant, Eloise, a nerd in Warpaint, Dragon Matrix 7, Eerie V23, Excelsior, Goatlieb, Kazorm, Lima, Nathan Welch Jr., Thomas Piedkowski, Trip Hop and Skip, and Valenrook. Thanks for your support, guys. That said, let's get started. And welcome back to Solasta, Lost Valley, as the adventure continues. Our beleaguered heroes, having been routed by acid-spewing insects, and uh, confronted by inexplicable undead and unusually aggressive gorillas, now find themselves stranded in a mysterious verdant valley, possibly of the lost variety. But they are uh, still in good shape, good spirits, and they are completely not dead. So, let's see what else awaits them in this exotic undergrowth. I'm gonna guess more gorillas, but uh, I guess we'll find out. Oh, and uh, I did poke a bit at this off-screen. And uh, you reach it from there, but it does require a jump spell. And we're not going to burn a spell slot on that right now. Maybe later, once we're uh, ready to settle in for a long rest. Okay, that's where we knocked down that tree earlier. So I guess we're headed this way. Old ruins. Oh yeah, yeah, those do appear to be some slightly used ruins. And some very large apes. I, uh, I'm actually intimidated here, given um, given just how strong the tiny, the comparatively tiny gorillas were. Now we're facing things that are like four times their mass. Are simians considered humanoids? I mean, technically they are, but um, for game purposes, I feel like they'd be classified as beasts. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Just just had to be sure. That would have made this a lot easier. We'll just twin cast Guiding Bolt instead. One hit. I'll take that. I mean, one hit is better than none. We also landed that hit on the closer one, so we should hopefully be able to take him down before he gets any actions. In fact, we, um, we surprised the apes, but not the gorillas. Interesting. I guess they roll separately for each enemy group. The gorillas are on the far side of the ruins, too, so it'll take them at least two rounds to get to us. Shalele up. Natura muto viribe.
Expeditious advance. Oh my goodness. Eben. You'll get us all killed. That is interesting, though. Um, I assumed enemies in Celasta had a perception circle, but it is actually not a perception cone, but they do have, like, a distinct blind spot behind them. That's a nice touch. I uh, really appreciate that. The big issue with a lot of these tactical stealth systems is that enemies are either omni-aware in all directions, or that they're... Their perception cones imply they have no peripheral vision. But uh, this does a pretty good job of simulating an actual awareness range, I suppose. Assuming you don't turn your head, I guess. I mean, it doesn't really take necks into account. Damn. That's fine. Don't beat yourself up. We're fine. Okay, that one's getting ready to huck rocks at us. Hey, oh. No. <laughs> wow. Not only was that a double hit, that was a double crit. Apparently our guys have no patience for monkey business. hit. Get uh, Thigor on point to draw fire. Don't get us all killed. Nice. Wow, that's that's another crit. You know, that guy might not actually be able to get through the uh, rubble. He's two by two. Went around to Thigor. Interesting. A fine stroke. Praising Evan, please. But yes, that was some uh, fantastic thrusting. Will this guy tag us with a parting shot?
He will not. And now it's over. Only it were that easy, Garvin. Natura Encho Malmis. And that was it. The Apocalypse. Man, we uh, we destroyed those guys. Of course, when the dice are that kind, you just know there's some sort of karmic balance coming. Clearly, you have trained well. Ooh. Oil of acuteness. That's a pretty basic enchanting ingredient. With any luck, we can get our hands on some primed plate. Eben could uh, certainly use it. Intriguing. Very uh, Indiana Jones. Wow, this gate is massive. There are empty spaces here for something beetle shapes. Are there now? There are empty spaces here for something beetle shapes. Okay, so apparently we need two beetle shaped keys. Duly noted. All right, not bad. Some easy XP, some nice loot, and an optional side quest. Though I suppose that uh, that door might might be our way out of the valley. Our primary quest is to uh, find our way back to Galar Golden Tongue. So I could see that door being the literal gateway to like an escape tunnel, a way to uh, circumvent the Redeemers, perhaps. Or it could just be optional loot or something. Maybe, uh, maybe a secret boss. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah, the uh, staggered rocks make it pretty clear this is how we get down. That's fun. We'll just grab all this stuff first. Really? Igor, could you please... Thank you, Thygor. Crawling through dirt. Nothing new here. Hey guys, glad you could join us. We'll just uh, split focus here. Ooh. 
Ooh, River Emerald. That's a rare enchanting ingredient. Calm down, Garvin. All right, I think we're done up here. Let's find our way down. We do still have that one random plant that was jump locked, but we'll worry about that later. And that, uh, that looks conspicuous. We do have this one random pushable rock here, but I'm not sure how we would get over there. Also, we uh, do need to take a short rest to recharge Action Surge. But I'm holding off until Expeditious Retreat expires. I don't want to squander those last few minutes. kidding me? I just killed someone by pushing a rock on them. Okay, well, that happened. Um, yeah, okay, well, we'll uh, load back into uh, wherever our last autosave was and I'll get us back to this point. We'll be right back. And we are back. Third episode, and we're already three timelines in. For those of you who uh, missed that, uh, apparently Eben crushed Garvin with a boulder, and then Garvin drowned. So, yeah. Thankfully, the game did save right after we finished clearing those ruins, so I just had to grab the loot again and then hightail it over here. And, uh, hey, I also got an achievement, so that's fun. Gotta love those achievements that you get for finding new and interesting ways to fail. And I suppose as an added bonus, I, uh... Oh, we have a ladder here. Good arms you've got. I suppose I'm now also much more alert to uh, party positioning before I interact with these objects. We've got a boat over there. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, that's um, that's where those buildings are. Well, we definitely want to check that out. Though we uh, also have no idea if the inhabitants are hostile or not, so we will want to approach with caution. Lady Fairblade did mention that there were orcs in the area, so I suspect we'll run into those at some point. Hmm. Nothing yet. All right, let's push up. Oh, okay. Tolarian Pure Voice, Forge Quartermaster, and Samco Flint. Non-hostile, so I think we're good. Hmm, looks like a cave-in. 
This rock is blocking the way into the grotto. Yeah, yeah. Find some way to move it or a way around. Interesting. I wonder how you would remove it. Maybe with a sufficiently high strength? Hola! Well met and rejoice, noble visitors. My name is Tolarian. Rejoice? <laughs> In the middle of nowhere? But of course. Rejoice to have met me. And who are you, exactly? You wouldn't hail from Masgarth, perchance. And what if we did? Heard of the Scavengers? Sure. Well, here we call ourselves the Forge. Oh, okay. So these are the, um, the, the, the equivalent of the Scavengers from Crown of the Magister. They're the NPC faction that scours locations once you've cleared them and uh, pick up anything you missed. It's a very convenient mechanic. What do you know about this less than fair valley? It is sealed off from the outside, since the only exits are controlled by the Redeemers. The ruler of the valley is called Orinetus. He is some kind of magician. He lives in the city, in the upper city to be precise. Orinetus. Orinetus is the ruler? Yes, our beloved Lord Protector. Was he already the ruler at the time of the Cataclysm? Possibly, though I wasn't around at the time. Unlikely, surprising, and yet fascinating. This city you mentioned. Kerr Hifrid, an ancient Malakalan garrison city. The name Kerr does hint at a Manakalan origin, before the Cataclysm. A Manakalan fortress? It survived the Cataclysm? I've been there, and the architecture is clearly imperial. There really is no accounting for taste. You mentioned an upper city. I, Orinetus, and his court live there. The lower city is home to the common folk. Orinetus isn't quite as racist as the Empire was, but his inner circle, they're only high elves. What can you tell us about the Redeemers? Giant insects, very aggressive and territorial. They live in the mountains all around the valley. That bad? I've never heard of any way around them. Interesting. Would you care to remind us of your fields of activity, friend? Of course. You clear a place of its, uh, shall we say, inhabitants. You tell us where, and we bring out what you left behind and we sell it. And you get your fair share of the gleanings. And your share is quite generous? It is, but consider the time and trouble you save. And what other services do you offer? Information, magical components, sometimes items, and we can always use some help. Help? What kind of help? The profitable kind. You help us, and we help you. And, in time, out of an encounter in the swamps blossoms true friendship. Which reminds me... I have a small errand, if you're interested. We're listening. What's the job? Deliver a pack of meat to the capital city. My friend Henrik, the butcher, will Henrik. give you a receipt to bring back to me. We'll see what we can do. Many thanks. Well, I'm glad to see that Henrik is doing well for himself after that whole war with the Sorax thing. Good for him. Wasn't expecting to run into him here, but, uh... Such is the life of an adventurer. We should go. Stay in the light. So that gives us access to the scavengers. That's handy. And Tolerian here is also a vendor. So let's see what he's got. A 
assorted weapons, pretty standard. Maul. I think that's new. I don't think they had that in Crown of the Magister. Ah, and then all the good stuff is gated behind reputation. Lots of primed weapons there for enchanting. No plate mail. No half plate. But we do have some magic stuff. Shield plus one. That'd be great for Thygor. Ooh, and uh, hide armor plus two. That would be excellent for Garvin. Sylvan armor. Well, unfortunately, as a sorcerer, it appears that Mora is not proficient with clothes. That, that's got to be awkward. I'm going to assume that's an oversight, but hopefully they do have some nice sorcerer gear in Lost Valley. Okay, I would also accept Bracers of Defense. Oh, that's interesting. That's actually not that expensive. That might be a good investment if we... if we decide to really get into crafting magic items. Because normally they do take a very long time to finish. Oh, and a Wand of Identify. We, we definitely want that. That would uh, pay for itself after ten uses. We are seeing some really nice stuff here. We just can't afford any of it. Oh, we definitely want that. And a boatload of enchanting schematics. None of which we can currently purchase. Yeah, yeah, there's a, there's a lot to look forward to. Nothing we can actually afford right now. And even if we could, he would not sell it to us. But that's something to plan around, because obviously... Obviously the uh, Forge, the Scavengers, are... Are a pretty important faction to stay on the good side of, since they provide one of the basic game services. Oh, Thygor's still overloaded. Let's dump the uh, gorilla pelts. Those are cheap enough that we can just buy them back if we need them. I do want to craft magic items, but there's no guarantee we'll find schematics that require those specific hides. Right, and we have an excuse to visit the capital city now, too. And Henrik. That uh, Oranetis guy is obviously a key player. And given that uh, from Crown of the Magister, we know that the original Manicolin rulers were apparently dragons disguised as elves, Oranetis could very well be much more than he, he seems at a glance. You guys don't mind if I just um, help myself, right? Yeah, I didn't think so. They are very gracious hosts. I appreciate that. I think one stack of javelins is sufficient. We'll sell the excess. Oh, right. We've also got Samco here. Let's see what she's got for us.
Hey there. Name's Sanko Flint. Clear skies. Teleria must have asked you to do something for us. I'd like to ask you something too. Since I gather you're trekking through the area. What do you need? Some friends of mine vanished while checking some ruins nearby. As surely as if a blizzard buried them on the tundra. And you want us to find them? If they're alive, please bring them back. If you find proof of their deaths, I'd like to return it to their families. What proof would that be? They'd carry an amulet of the forge, like mine. If you find corpses with that, well, don't underestimate the dangers of this valley. I'm not sending you after a Remoraz, but watch out nonetheless. We'll see what we can do. Thanks, friends. Stay in the light. Yeah, we can do that. I think looting corpses is pretty standard protocol for adventurers. And obviously it's in our best interest to bump our rep with the forge. That's uh, better prices and better gear. Hey, we've got a rest point here too. That's convenient. Recipe for poison arrows. Not useful for us, but those do have good resale value. You can rest here if you want. Why, thank you. I do appreciate it. These guys really are good hosts. Okay, lots of useful stuff here. Let's, um, let's push on. I guess we're headed this way. Oh, right. Um, Expeditious Retreat has expired. So, let's short rest. That should recharge Action Surge. Oh, but there goes our long stride. <laughs> That's fine. We'll just recast that, I guess. You know, I should probably get in the habit of long striding Garvin, too. I think as a dwarf, he does have reduced movement. Blocked path over there. We'll have to find a crossing. Broken Bridge. I don't know, it looks pretty functional to me. Oh. Direwolf. And yes, now now it is a broken bridge. Thank you. Oh, and we are about to be spotted. Sorry, doggo. Yeah, you can tell Mora's heart wasn't in that. Perhaps if you tried to be loud instead? All right, let's kill some dire doggos. <laughs> we'll 
We'll get Thigor on point for the impending pack attack. More coming your way. Next time, I swear. Hey, what do you know? He did get it next time. Good for you. Normal wolf only has like 12 hit points. Let's neutralize him real quick. And now we can focus on the bigger threats. That's battle. Spiegel is broken. Uh, I think it's because we died and then reloaded in. I don't think his bonus is applied properly the second time. That did come up in testing. A full reset should fix it. You're done like the rest. Natura Muto Viribe. Again, harder. Wow, he is just tanking those hits. They're barely getting through the ablative hit points. I like the whole uh, Dragon Ball Z thing he's got going on, too. Actually, let me change that. I like the avatar thing he's got going on there. He's a tough guy. Walk it off. Cat Paul, let's get you in there. Hey, not bad. I do get leery about sending her in. She's so fragile. Come on. That's not great. If his bonuses were working properly, that would have been four damage. But I do think its other bonuses are still working. It just seems to be the damage bonus. 
that, Basil. <laughs> yeah, sorry, pupper. Die! Dire doggos defeated. Actually, now that I think about it, it might not be the um, the reset that broke Spiegel's damage bonus. It might be Shalele. I'll have to do some testing off screen to verify. Oh, and uh, yet another high end enchanting ingredient. If only we had some actual schematics. We did get another poison recipe, but unfortunately we don't actually have a poison kit yet. So we can't start crafting poisoned arrows. Which, again, would really just be for resale. Let's finish mapping the road. We're almost out of time, so it would be nice to secure our exit grid. Um, guys? There you go. Yeah, we, uh, we really need to find a strength-boosting item for Eben. There's our blocked path. Which gets us some Dwarven Primrose, no big deal. Interesting. Oh, hi. And that is... That's plus one scale now. Oh, man. That is very stylish, but... But that would be a downgrade for Eben. And we get the same bonus from an unenchanted breastplate. You know what? I don't actually like the way that looks. We'll just sell it. Plus one scale mail will get us a fair chunk of change. All right, we are uh, almost at time, but I would very much like to have a chat with this non-hostile giant over here. Gartok, okay. And he's marked as a merchant. What is this? A giant? Village? He doesn't seem hostile. I speak giant. Let's try. Yes, please. All right, Gar Talk. Let's Gar Talk. Hello, little ones. What are you doing here? Trading. Giants conduct trade? I do. Need direwolf pelts? 
and large feathers. Plenty. We might be able to find that. Then we trade. I thought giants were all stupid. Maybe someone cast a spell on it. Garvin, he is right in front of you. But I guess charisma is your dump stat, so fair, fair enough. And we already have the direwolf pelts, so we just need feathers. Well, that is fun. I like, I like when you can actually talk with monsters. Jump. Uh, Garvin? Where are you going, buddy? Yeah, why don't you just head back on over here? And uh, we've also got partially skeletonized corpses, which I feel is a pretty good sign that we're headed into another fight. We're uh, pretty much at time. So this is probably a good place to call it. But um, yes, once again, a very productive session. We knocked out a couple of fights. We met some fascinating NPCs. Got some new quests. So yeah, yeah, we are coming along. We'll hit the pause button for now. I will uh, take stock of our inventory once more. I see Thygor is now overloaded. Maybe I'll go uh, dump that scale mail at the forge camp real quick. And uh, we will pick up here next time as we uh, track down some feathers and lock down this giant trade deal. See you then. Oh, and remember, although I do love playing Solasta Lost Valley, you can find out more about the game by visiting the official website, the official social media feeds, or the official store pages. And if you'd like to uh, help support the channel, then feel free to push the buttons that do the things, or maybe even check out the Patreon. Links are in the description. Unlikely, surprising, and yet fascinating. <laughs>